pay attention. Uh, repeatedly now, uh, Donald Trump has said that this election will be rigged against him, challenging really the, the core foundation of our democratic system. Can you promise the American people that, that this election will be conducted in a fair way? I, I don't even really know where to start on answering this question. Uh, of course the elections will not be rigged. I've never heard of somebody complaining about being cheated before the game was over. If Mr. Trump is suggesting that there is a conspiracy, um, that's ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense. Is he high? Is he high again? He must be high. The chairwoman of the DNC was forced to resign during the Democratic Convention for rigging the primary just last week. Please disperse. Nothing to see here, please. And he comes on TV saying vote rigging is a conspiracy? He must be high. Voting machines were made to rig the election. That's their primary purpose. The illusion of choice and the madness doesn't stop there. There is so much going on during the vote on the HPV vaccine mandate, you really have to pay attention. Start with State Rep Hamilton at his desk. He leans over to vote a second time for his desk mate, Dan Branch, then reaches back to vote for Charlie Howard and cast a fourth vote for Wayne Smith. He's not the only one scrambling to vote. Rewind the video and take a look at the top of the screen. State Reps West and Phillips both lean over to vote for themselves and their desk mates. Phillips votes a third time for Christian. On the left, Donna Howard votes for State Rep Vo. State Representative Dunham didn't have to leave his chair to cast four votes. One for himself, then for Coleman, Martinez Fisher, and then Vesey. Sometimes the voting is across party lines. Hartnett, a Republican, reaches back to vote for Democrat Oliveda. Democrat Matt Reynolds votes for Republican England. And Republican John Davis votes for Democrat Noriega. Please, sir. Most voters have no way of knowing if their lawmakers are actually casting their own vote. Even though the legislature is broadcast on cable TV, the cameras change from this to this when it's time to vote. Please, it's first. It is, uh, I don't even really know where to start on answering this question. Uh, of course the elections will not be rigged. Mr. Curtis, would you please state your full name for the record? My uh, name is Clinton Eugene Curtis. And where do you reside? Tallahassee, Florida. And what is your profession? I'm a computer programmer. Would you please speak into the microphone so the audience can hear your testimony? I'm a computer programmer. Mr. Curtis, are there programs that can be used to secretly fix elections? Yes. How do you know that to be the case? Because in October of 2000, I wrote a prototype for President Congressman Tom Feeney at the company I work for in Oviedo, Florida, that did just that. And when you say did, did just that, it would rig an election? It would flip the vote 51-49 to whoever you wanted it to go to and whichever race you wanted to win. And would that program that you designed be something that elections officials that might be on county boards of elections could detect? They'd never see it. Mr. Would you answer that question once again? They would never see it. So how would such a, such a program, a secret program that uh, fixes the election, how could it be detected? You would have to view it either in the source code or you'd have to have a receipt and then count the hard paper against the actual vote total. Other than that, you won't see it. All right, Mr. Curtis, uh, if you had been asked, you or others with your professional expertise had been asked to design a protected program to, that would protect the Ohio elections from against, against such software to fix the election, could you have done so? If we've been asked to make a program that could fix the election, sure, anybody can do it. No, could, could you have designed a program or to, a procedure or a protocol that would have protected Ohio against this kind of rigging? No, you have to look at the source code. You have to get probably programmers from both 
for all parties to look at the source code and determine if there's anything in there that shouldn't be there. I mean, it's a simple program. You're adding one to a person's total. It's 100 lines of code tops. There's, all right, if, uh, are you aware of whether there was any protective action in Ohio against this kind of vote rigging through software? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. You were, you were not asked to assist in the development of any protective system, is that correct? No, I was not. In Europe, have you uh, reviewed at all the election results in Ohio? No, I haven't. Okay. Given the availability of such uh, vote rigging software and the testimony that has been given under oath of substantial statistical anomalies and gross dis dis differences between exit polling data and the actual tabulated results, do you have an opinion whether or not Ohio election, the Ohio election, presidential election, was hacked? Yes, I would say it was. I mean, if you're, if you have exit polling data that is significantly off from the vote, then it's probably hacked. And your testimony is under oath. Yes, sir. And the testimony you've given is true. Yes, sir. Thank you. Waters and I have the same question. Come back to the podium. Who did you say you were asked to prepare? I was asked by Tom Feeney. He's now a congressman. At that time, he was uh, Speaker of the House of Florida, Yang Enterprises, which was the company I worked for, lobbyist, and their corporate attorney. He wore a lot of hats. And at the time, he was the Speaker of the House of Florida. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, thank you. Congressman. You say he was the, the lobbyist for the voting machine company and at the same time he was Speaker of the House? I don't know what the voting machine company is. He was a lobbyist for Yang Enterprises. We had NASA contracts. And, and Yang Enterprises did what? Computers? Computers. Okay, and he was your lobbyist? Your he was a lobbyist for that company, yes. And he asked you to design a, to see, to design a code to rig an election? Yes. While he was Speaker of the Florida House? Yes. This was during or previous to the 2000 election? Yes, October, end of September. And did he ever express why he wanted a code to rig an election? No, I immediately assumed that they were trying to keep you guys from cheating them. So, <laughs> so I wrote up the documentation of what you would look for in the source code, how you would make sure that you didn't get, you know, taken advantage of, make sure that all voting machines had receipts because that way you could back count the ones that looked a little funny. And I handed it a paper. I received you mean a paper trail? Yes, a paper trail. And I handed that in to Mrs. Yang and said, here's your report, here's your program. And she said, you don't understand, we need to hide the fraud in the source, in the source code. Hide the fraud, not reveal the fraud. Not reveal the fraud because it's needed to, con to control the vote in South Florida, was what she said. Whoa, That's what she whoa. said. That's what your, she knowledge, said. your knowledge, was this used? I have no idea. I, I was ready to leave, so, so I retired and left the company. Your testimony a moment ago, I think you said just before you left and answered the Congresswoman Tucker Jones question, that, would you just repeat what you said in terms of uh, the, the uh, exit polls? Oh, the exit polls should not be significantly different than the vote. And if they were, you would conclude what? I would conclude someone's playing with the vote. Now with the exit polls? That's possible too. Okay, something, so why something would, is definitely skewed. Something is skewed in one or the other or both. Right. To select which one, you'd have to see where the problem is. Let me ask you one further question. Assuming for the moment that such software, that's what you call it, such software to, to rig a vote was used in one or more machines in Ohio or in Florida, could you today detect that if you looked at the source code? If you could get the machines and they have not been patched yet, I mean, once they get in and touch them, anything can happen. You can also set timers to do that, but then you see the timers. Then you'd have to take those machines, decompile them, which I couldn't do, but possibly a Microsoft, an MIT, something could do. You might, you might be able to see it. You might. Not, this is, depends on how good they are at destroying what they had. Destroying what they had by tampering with the machine afterwards or by programming a, a destroyed 
uh, instruction in the first place. Right, because since you didn't... Both, either or both? Either or both. You, you didn't actually see what's in there, so you don't know if the code is running in a single executable or running in various modules. If it's running modules, you can make the code actually eat itself. Let me ask you one further question. We, I have heard, I've been told that people who assume that lots of the election results, or that a large fraction of the election results in any state may have been affected by uh, deliberate fraud in the computer, are, are paranoid because the, in order to do that, you have to have access to thousands of machines and that, that would be readily detectable. To what extent is that true? It depends on the technology you use. If you did a central tabulation machine that fed in, all you'd have to do is set a flag. You set a flag, the central, tabu tab central tabulation machine would then flip your vote. So if you, so one person putting in bad code in a central tabulation machine could affect thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of votes. Right, and you could activate, and, you could activate either automatically or you could make it so that there's code existing on like an electronic machine that feeds it where you would punch it in, it would set the flag, the server would see the flag, and then... And if you had a recount, uh, and there were no, like, no paper trail, would that be, assuming that that had happened, would that be revealable by seeing a discrepancy between what the tabulator, the central tabulator showed, and what the individual machines, which had not been tampered with showed? Not if I wrote it. Why not? In other words, in other words... I would make a match. You could, you could work back from the tabulator to the individual machines, so the tabulator would tell the machines to switch their results? Yes. It talks both ways. You can Congress flip it to whatever you need. And they actually did talk to each other, the, yes. the machines and the tabulator. As long as it's hooked up, as long as it's networked together, they could talk to each other. So in other words, there's absolutely no assurance whatsoever on anything with regard to these machines? Absolutely none, unless you look at the source code and make sure it's safe before it goes out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman Mathers. Uh, I know that Congresswoman Waters has a question, then Senator Miller, and then Congresswoman Stephanie Tubbs Jones. This will uh, only take a moment if you would come back to the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this. Uh, as you know, um, there there has been a lot of uh, discussion about. Uh, I think it was Debold. Um, company, their relationship to the president and, and the administration, and supposedly comments about um, helping to ensure uh, that the president was re-elected. In your world, in your environment, uh, have you heard any of this kind of discussion? Do you know people who work for Debo? Uh, do you have any sense of any um, actions that may have been taken? I don't know anything about that at all. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Senator Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, sir, I suspect people will attack you in terms of your credibility. Could you restate once again your, your credentials? Uh, I'm a programmer. I work for NASA, work for ExxonMobil, work for um, Florida Department of Transportation, and other elements of my story, because this company, well, let's get into it. Why not? <laughs> this company also they have NASA contracts, and they were basically downloading tons of information, I mean gigabytes worth, and handing them off to this little Chinese guy named Henry Ni, nee, and it didn't seem right, and you know, he was hacking things, and I wrote a program for DOT that allowed contractors to send their information into DOT, and he was kind of the quality assurance guy for software. He put a wiretapping module in the program that went out to the contractors so that it actually sent everything they sent back to Yang. So I reported all this, and just last March, I think, he was arrested for attempting to send anti-tank missile chips to the capital of Communist China. So if that's correct, this is such a small thing. <laughs> of course, I think he only got a $100 fine. And no time. Thank you. Thank you. Congresswoman Stephanie Tepps Jones. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we are now going to. Uh, back to the public testimony.